Earlier this month, the jury acquitted the officers of Monroe's murder. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We begin today with an update on the three Americans who've been held in Iran for over six months. Shane Bauer, Sour Shord, and Josh Fatal were detained on July 31st after accidentally crossing into Iran while hiking in the mountains of Iraqi Kurdistan. The three are in Iran's notorious Evan prison. It's been more than 200 days since the families of the detained Americans have had any contact with them. Their last consular visit from Swiss diplomats who represent American interests in Iran was in late October. And the Iranian lawyer their families asked to represent them has also been refused access. In November, Iran's judiciary announced espionage charges against the three. But this Tuesday brought a glimmer of hope when Iran's top human rights official told journalists in Geneva he's considering a request by the families of the three hikers to visit them in prison. Mohammad Javad Larijani said the Iranian Council for Human Rights had recommended the detained Americans be allowed family visits. The mothers of the hikers have sent a letter to Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad on Monday, urging him to allow them to visit their children in prison and help secure their release. They quoted the Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who issued an appeal on their behalf last month. He wrote, It's difficult to escape the conclusion that Shane, Sarah and Josh continue to be held because they're Americans and not for any legal reason. I urge the Iranian authorities not to deny them their freedom in order to express their discontent with the United States. Nations have a right to disagree, but their citizens should not be made to pay the price of their differences, he wrote. Well, now I'm joined by two of the moms, the mothers of Shane Bauer and Sarah Shord two of the three Americans detained in Iran. Shane Bauer is a freelance journalist whose work has appeared in The Nation, Pacific News Service, and we played a report of his on Democracy Now! Sarah Shord is a teacher and writer. She was living in Damascus, Syria, with Shane last summer. Cindy Hickey and Nora Shord are our guests today. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you. So what is the latest, Cindy? Um, Tell us what you have heard, um, the latest news we've gotten that they're saying possibly you could meet uh, with your sons and daughter. Yes, we heard the same news through media that everyone else has, that uh, possibly they're going to look at our visas with a good light. And um, we're just waiting that moment that we get official word that we can begin our travels to see our children. Um, we haven't seen them for 200 days. We haven't heard from them. We haven't gotten one phone call, so we're anxious to see them. Nora, never since they were captured on July 31st, have you heard from Sarah or the others? We've had no contact at all with the three. Um, we haven't even had a phone call, which is really, really difficult for us not to hear our kids' voices for this long. The Swiss have been in twice. The last time the Swiss were in was October 29th, very short visit. Um, apparently, they appeared well, seemed healthy, but at this point, we're worried six months in prison is, has got to have a really bad effect on them. We're very worried about them. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me about your children. Tell me about Shane. Shane, we did, uh, when he was out, when he was a freelance journalist, we played a piece of his. But tell us who Shane is, Cindy. Shane is very compassionate. Um, he's, he's very caring of, of the world. He's very open to all cultures and religions. Um, and in his work, he, he likes to express, um, you know, the word of the people. He likes to bring that to light. He's. Um, You're from Minnesota. Yes, I'm from Minnesota. He was raised there. He was raised in Minnesota and um, finished high school in California, where his father lived, and then soon began his travels and has spent a lot of time in the Middle East. Graduated from UC Berkeley with a peace and conflict major in Arabic and a photojournalist minor. Mm -hmm. And what about Sarah, Nora? Uh, well, you know, Sarah was over there looking for a way to kind of give back. Part of, you know, what they talked about when they went to the Middle East was, you know, what can we do for this, for this part of the world? Um, she taught English there. She taught English back here. She also uh, volunteered in a program for the Iraqi student refugees there in Syria. Uh, she's all about, like, giving back to the world. Um, 
you know, very tolerant, patient, compassionate, open young woman. And Sarah and Shane are a couple? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they have been for a while? Yes. So what were they doing uh, in Iraq, in Iraqi Kurdistan? Well, Shane and Sarah live in Damascus. They're avid outdoors hikers, and they were on vacation. Um, Josh came to visit, and they had been told that this was a beautiful area. Shane actually talks to me on a regular basis and shared with me a month before the plans for their trip, a week before I talked to him, and he said, it's a great place, it's beautiful, it's safe. And how did you hear, Nora, that your kids had been captured? Well, I actually heard from Cindy. She and got, you knew each other before? We knew yes. each other before. I wasn't answering the phone. She got the call first. You know, uh, Sean had called the embassy in Baghdad, and then we heard through them. Sean being the fourth Sean hiker, Fessel, who right. we had on Democracy mm -hmm. Now!, uh, who wasn't feeling well, so he didn't go with them that Yeah, he was, in, he was in phone contact with them throughout the, the day. Uh, and that was he was the one that got the last phone call, which we're extremely grateful for, for sure. Because they desperately called, they had their cell phone. And what did was it Shane who called Shane Sean? Shane called Sean and said that we're being taken into custody by authorities, Iranian authorities. I don't even know if he was specific about. Did they know they'd crossed a border? No, I don't believe so. I mean, again, that was not something that I believe was discussed, but. You know, I, I'm myself a hiker, and I've crossed borders accidentally myself, not knowing. There's no way of knowing. So mm -hmm. could they have crossed the border accidentally? Absolutely. I know they had no intention of entering Iran. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday, the Iranian president, Mahmoud, uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, said the decision to release the three lay with the Iranian judiciary, but added that Iranians held in American jails should also be freed. Earlier this month, he said the three may be swapped with jailed Iranians in the United States. We do not like to have anyone in jail. Some discussions are going on to swap the three with jailed Iranians in America. They entered illegally across our borders, and their crime is clear. But those Iranians who are in America's jail have no clear crime. In response, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said the hikers were, quote, being unjustly denied and should be released without further delay, but emphasized that there were no talks between the United States and Iran on a prisoner exchange. What's your response to uh, what the Iranian president has said, uh, Cindy? I feel like this should be totally separate. I mean, this is not about—it shouldn't be about their U.S. citizenship. If they indeed cross the border by accident, and that's what they did, they should be treated as such and released. I, I hope that this isn't going to continue or be involved in our two nations in disagreement. Is it frightening when you hear, for example, the headlines today that I was just reading? of the escalation of tension with Iran. Do you feel like your kids are being caught, held as kind of pawns in this? Well, we've seen the same media that everyone else has, and, you know, there's been statements about the trade, the swap. So, you know, are we concerned? I try really hard as a mother to stay focused on the task and the goal of getting them released. Um, I hear it. There's no way I can deny that um, it doesn't uh, set some emotion, but I really try hard not to focus on that, because I have to be strong. Have you met with President Obama? No. Yeah. Have you met with Secretary of State Hillary Clinton? Yes, we did have a private meeting with her. And what did she tell you? That they're working, you know, they're doing the best they can, they're doing everything they can for us. And What and is that? There was no details. Do you feel that?